Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Today, we're going to be taking a look at some more ridiculous and out of control scenes from my 600 pound life. Thus far, we've seen a lot of crazy behaviors, such as deep frying in bed. What sort of craziness are we in for today? Stick around to find out. Before we proceed, please click the like button so that I may apply comb to mustache. Me you need those for you. Because I can. They're mine. Because he can. They're his. When you ask a smart person why they did something, they often say, because I can. They're going in my room. What? They're going in my room, he said. <laughs> <laughs> He's already telling you at the store his plans for that bag of Oreos. Thing. Do not watch this video if you are hungry. You'll probably end up biting your phone or computer mouse or something like that. Welcome back to Plot Twist. It's Logan, and I'm not here to waste your time. It's Logan. I don't know if I've heard this guy before on Plot Twist. Okay, maybe a little, but it is YouTube after all. Let's dive right into the meals of My 600 Pound Life Season 4. I still kept eating. Even though that's the one that's taking everything from me. I still kept eating, even though that's the one that's taking everything from me. Dude, stop giving him these lines all the time. Aisha's whole world turned upside down the day I fell out of that truck. It was very degrading to have to ask my wife to go back to work. I okay, so this guy fell out of a truck and I guess injured himself, and he has been bed bound ever since. I didn't feel like a man no more. Chan kicks us off right and chooses delivery pizza for breakfast. He didn't feel like a man anymore ever since his injury. Ooh, my favorite. Two pepperoni pies to be exact. He lost his- What was he doing? Like picking it all apart? Two pepperoni pies to be exact. What he you... lost- What was that? His job as a truck driver because he could no longer fit in the truck and his wife had to go- He could no longer fit in the truck? What? You got too fat to be a truck driver? Jesus. Those are some of the fattest people on earth. Getting too fat for trucking is like getting too fast for racing. Right? <laughs> You're an MVP, baby. What are they doing firing you? That's messed up, though, dude. Damn, you got to be way big to be too big to truck. Back to work to support him. All right, that kid on the bottom left um, does not look happy. And their kids. That's how he ended up this way, sadly. Nothing has changed for him since then. We are a family. But it doesn't feel that way. Is he watching his kids and wife play at the park from his truck like a park weirdo? Oh my goodness, that is a sad display. Honey, we're going to the park. You want to come play with me and the kids? It's going to be great. Now, you know I can't actually leave the car. I'm just going to sit here like a weirdo and watch you from the window. You guys having a lot of fun over there? It looks fun. When he fell out of the truck, he got it into his head. I can't do it. Food is definitely killing me. When he fell out of the truck, he got it into his head that he can't do it. Okay, so this dude fell and got injured, like I said, and he has gained a lot of weight. I don't know if it's the injury that is preventing him from trucking or the weight that he gained. Because the narrator said he got too big to fit in the truck. So, I actually used to do a bit of trucking myself when I was younger. With my stepdad, we used to move furniture from coast to coast for Mayflower. We've also done cars before. Either way, I've been to a lot of truck stops, and I can tell you that truck stops are the underbelly of America. You want to hear some wild stuff? Turn on a CB radio to channel 19 and go to a truck stop and just listen. Oh my goodness gracious, you will be traumatized. Food is the only thing in my life that's never changed. It's Food is the only thing in my life that's never changed. Yeah, people are always talking about it like it's a constant. You know what else is a constant? Um, every other substance that exists on this planet. Crack is always going to be crack. Heroin's always going to be heroin. So, so what? That means I need to do it? Okay. It's that part of these people's addiction that I just really don't get, because I've quit many substances myself. But my rationale for using them was never, this is the only thing that is constant in my life. I'm sorry, but that was never it for me. I'm not saying that that's like not good enough of an excuse. Everybody has their own reasons and they can be whatever you want. I'm just saying that's a weird one. This dude has a family and kids and stuff. He has a pretty stable home life. He's all acting like he's walking the streets or something. All I know, man, is this cheeseburger. It's the only thing that can bring me back to normalcy. Bro, you got a family and kids. Like, <laughs> that's pretty normal. You got a pretty loving support structure there. The only thing in life that brings me any joy is this cheeseburger, man. Everything else is nonsense. Honey, I'm standing right here. What the hell? <laughs> We've been married for several years. I don't bring you any kind of joy or anything. Okay. All right, the kids the kids too right it's all about the cheeseburger okay hun all right always been there yeah it's always gonna be there 
Yeah, can I get two cheeseburgers? Too? <laughs> I'm sorry, it's just dumb to me. It's always gonna be there. Yep, a lot of things are always there. Fries. He hates his life, but it does not stop him from getting two burgers and two fries for a quick snack while he's out and about. Hates his life what? He sits on the couch all day and his wife brings him food and he drives around in a truck and gets fast food. What does he hate about his life? He does hate his life a little less when he's eating. So he's too big to hang out with his family at the park, but he still insists on eating McDonald's on the way there. These 600 pounds- Oh, so part of the reason that he's hanging out in the car like a creeper when they're at the park is because he's eating some food. <laughs> To further ensure that he cannot play with you at the park. Town lifers cannot resist the drive through Stop putting the drive through right across from the playground. Okay, stop it. You, you demons. Their lives now revolve around me. Their lives now revolve around me? Bro, I don't know if this guy is injured or if he's just gained so much weight that he can't really truck anymore. Although, like I said, to be too fat to truck is quite an ordeal. You could be very obese and still truck successfully. <laughs> I've seen it. Hey, Quay. That's my water right there. For lunch, his wife deep fries some chicken wings and he slams down some Pepsi. Fried chicken wings are on. Okay, let's see. We've got fried chicken wings and we've also got some french fries going on the left there. This man has had enough deep fried food, okay? Another meal that is slowly but surely killing this country. I don't oh, this country. <laughs> that meal is tearing this country apart. I don't know why I can't stop. And I feel like I'm worthless. I don't know why I can't stop. I feel like I'm worthless. And then you're sitting there with a big old plate of fried food on your belly plate. And you're eating it with what is probably some buffalo sauce. That's what I would have with that. With that fried chicken, I would have maybe some buffalo sauce. Maybe some ranch, um, if I'm being real. But I wouldn't eat that. There's a lot of days I wonder if this is the day where... Aisha's had enough. What's her breaking point before she finally says, I can't do it no more? Okay, so she's the one working and supporting you since you lost your trucking job, and she's also bringing you heaps of fried food while you sit on the couch. His 10 year old. I don't know why you would be concerned that she may be over this and want to leave. Every woman dreams of one day having a man that she can take care of while he lays on the couch and melds into it. Obviously, she loves this. What are you talking about? Daughter feeds him and brings him whatever he needs. This man- Oh, it's the daughter now. This man dips his fries into a giant bowl of ketchup and sits there getting weighted on hand and foot. Talk about the life. Oh, jeez, bro. He's got crutches just chilling in the background there. I love the sight of all of these. Like when you see like a very large person just sitting on a couch with food all about them and then like some thinner person bringing them food. It's always quite a sight. I don't know if it's a good one, but it is the life. This is not my chat that I fell in love with. Now I'm fighting to keep my family together. The kids should have to bury their father. No, they shouldn't have to bury their father. And he shouldn't just give up on life because he lost his trucking job or whatever. Get another one. Go work for Snyder, dude. They'll hire anyone. His wife is brought to tears by his laziness, crying to the camera, telling them how much he's changed since Chad got that big. Then the camera cuts, and he's eating an entire plate of banana pudding. Well, they edited it that way on purpose, bro. None of this stuff is happening as ironically <laughs> as they edit it, right? Although that would be hilarious. Yo, all of this food is killing me. That would be hilarious if they were literally eating while they were saying that. But no, they edited it together that way. They have them sitting in a little room somewhere talking about all the horrible things that are happening to them because of food. And then they overlay that audio over scenes of them eating. Okay, this is just called um, cinematography. This is beautiful art, if you will. Um, but no, it doesn't actually happen that way in real life. But that would be hilarious. Like, yo, my whole life is falling apart, dude. While wow, you're literally chewing like this shit, <laughs> f me up, son. <laughs> <sighs> so sad. It does make me wonder though how much of each item of food has been downed in one sitting in this world. I found a doctor. I bet that guy could eat a few plates of that. Dry line in the Houston area. What is that now? A box of pizza? Little boy, get that box of pizza out of here. He said he would see. Oh, it's worse, dude. It's way worse. It's way, way, way worse. That is a whole dozen of donuts. Oh my gosh, he's gonna eat the whole thing too. You know it. I could eat that whole thing of donuts. Let's be real. Donuts are the devil, dude. Get them out of here. I swear. I've been on this glycemic index thing a lot lately, but if you look that up for donuts, oh my goodness. It's like the highest glycemic index ever. It's gotta be like a hundred. 
Sugar by itself gives you a blood sugar spike. Carbs by themselves give you a blood sugar spike. Sugar and carbs together is an unholy matrimony made in hell. And we're selling the only thing that we own, which is our house. Okay, you're selling your house. This is the biggest leap of faith we have ever taken. The next day, he wakes up and devours a dozen donuts as his wife and kids pack the entire house for him to move to Houston. The entire house for him to move to Houston. All right, we've got ourselves a Canadian narrator. I love it. Not the I'm all about it. The right way to start off your big visit with Dr. Now. And I do mean big. It's been a hard few days on the road, and I just hope it's all worth it. Oh, we're in my sandwich. Uh-oh. You just got him one sandwich? Look at the look on her face. She looks terrified. What has happened in the past when you have forgot a sandwich? Wait a minute. There's only one sandwich here? I asked you to bring two sandwiches. Um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I won't ever let that happen again. I'm so sorry. I will stop somewhere immediately and get you enough ingredients to make a sandwich. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> honey, honey, why are you acting so scared for? <laughs> I don't like how scared she is. Did he just cuss? Sorry. On the car right. Oh my goodness. She's like, sorry. <laughs> she did look terrified, dude. Oh my goodness. And over, his wife only brings him one sandwich to eat, not two. Honestly, he looks like more of a... Dude, divorce her immediately. Three to four Yeah, he does look more like a three to four sandwich kind of guy. And you brought him one? What are you doing? Sandwich type of guy, but that's just me. When he notices this, she puts her hand over her mouth in fear. What would mm -hmm. happen if Chad doesn't get his precious second sandwich? He Something bad's gonna happen if he doesn't get his second sandwich. I don't like it. Looks livid, but I'm glad he doesn't make it his wife's problem. Well, he is on camera right now, so you know. When I start my day, I can't wait to start eating. Okay, what do we got? Some donuts? The my devil? Bad. Okay, we're on a different story now, and it looks like he is sending the devil donuts up the stairs on one of those little chairs that old people use. God, I would love one of those. Well, make me a plate and send it up to me so I don't have to go downstairs again. Oh my goodness gracious. They're sending it up to you so you don't have to go downstairs. Yeah, we wouldn't want you to have to get some exercise to get the food, even though you can't really fit through the hallway. I'm not trying to be mean, it just, my eyes work. And until breakfast, I know I over- Goodness gracious. Eat. I know I overeat, she said. What do you mean? This is genetic. I don't understand what you're talking, what do you mean? This is genetic, or the systemic discrimination is actually what's really doing you in here. It's not all those donuts that they just brought up to you. What do you mean? But food makes me happy. Just like Chad, Nikki loves donuts too. Who doesn't love a damn donut, bro? I could just sit here and eat them for the rest of time and never get tired of it, probably. But I mustn't. Her first meal of the day is three donuts, two chocolate frosted ones glazed, with a giant glass of southern sweet tea. Sweet tea with donuts? What are you doing? Her parents bring the groceries and snacks right upstairs so she doesn't need to come down. Yeah, come on, dad. What are you doing? That's clearly her dad or whatever setting that stuff up to her. At least make her come down the stairs to get it, man. Come on. We got to make your heart pump a little harder at least once a day. We wait on Nikki like you would an invalid. We wait on Nikki the way you would an invalid. Maybe you should stop. I know that it's easier said than done, and they've created this monster. And I've asked myself so many times, what is the difference between enabling and helping? When what is the difference between enabling and helping? Okay, bringing her the stuff that she enjoys a lot, but it is hurting her, is enabling. Helping her is telling her the hard truth and standing firm with the idea that you can't have these types of foods anymore. That's helpful. She's going to yell at you, whatever. It's still helpful. Even if people kick and scream because they don't want to hear the truth, it is still far more helpful than letting them live in a world of delusions. If she doesn't get the help that she needs, she's going to stop living soon. If he tells her the truth, her feelings are going to get hurt. And that might lead to change that is going to actually help her. A lot of the times your feelings are going to get hurt, but it's necessary. Getting your feelings hurt is not a medical condition. You have not just been assaulted or traumatized because of the words that somebody else said to you. And even if you pretend that other people's words hurt you, that doesn't give you justification to silence others. That clearly had nothing to do with what we're watching here, right? I'm just going off on some other stuff. Let's go. When am I enabling her and when am I helping her? I 
bringing her three donuts and a sweet tea and sending it up the stairs, uh, that is not helping her, my friend. That is enabling. Helping her would be like, all right, I made you five eggs, two pieces of toast, and a banana. Those of you that are against bananas will hate me for that. And you can come down the stairs to get it. Or you can eat nothing. That's what I would say. I'm sorry that I created this precedent where we got to this point, but today it stops. It's going to be real hard for you when I all of a sudden stop enabling you. It's going to suck, but here we are. Just know that I'm losing my daughter a pound at a time. He even starts- Well, dude, sending her donuts up the stairs, guy, come on. ...to cry when he realizes he's enabling her, and it truly does break my heart to hear that he's losing more of her. It is very sad. ...with every pound she gains. That really is a good way to put it, though. Now... I have okay, now, I watched a little bit of this yesterday, and to me right here, this looks like some sort of sweet glaze that is being put on top of these biscuits. Clearly it's not. It's biscuits and gravy, but this is the most, like, unseasoned-ass white gravy that I've ever seen in my life. Look how white it is. It's so white, it looks like cream cheese frosting. There's no specks of pepper or salt or anything in there. It's just straight up flour and water. What are we doing? How can you get this obese off of such bland food? That's what I want to know. No idea how high I'm up to. You have no idea how high you're up to. Perfect. Let's see. Well, if I knew your height, I could make an estimate here. Perfect. Chris has several palsy. And in many instances, my limitations far exceed his. Your brother has cerebral palsy, and in many instances, your limitations far exceed his. I bet he wishes that he could diet and exercise his cerebral palsy away, huh? Once again, I'm not trying to be mean. I feel like everybody is starting to live in such a world of delusions that just speaking the truth is offensive. By the way, I stand by the idea that bananas are fine. Unless you're on keto or something, dude. And that's a big statement. She does- That is a big statement. Make her way downstairs for dinner, though. Dinner looks like biscuits and gravy or chicken and dumplings. Of dude, that is the weakest gravy that I've ever seen, dude. There is not one bit of spice in that gravy. Of some sort. Her brother has cerebral palsy, and Nikki can literally do less than him. Those are her words, not mine. He was born with this disease. They're all very cognizant of their problems on this show. Disease, and she gave this disease to herself. That's crazy. Pretty profound when you put it that way. Can I get two glaze, two chocolate ice? Oh my goodness gracious. She can like barely talk. She's like, can I get two glaze? She's like, to the obesity level where you like are perpetually sick. Like literally on death's door. She eats so much sugar and fast food. I can't believe she's made it this long. And donut holes. My reward for getting up and being a human being is that I get donuts. What? My reward for getting up and being a human being is that I get donuts. What? Why are you rewarding yourself for becoming conscious? Hey, I woke up again like it's a celebration every time you wake up. I made it through the night without passing again. I guess I'll celebrate. That's morbid, but honestly, there's a little truth to that, right? Still, though, the very next morning, Nikki orders two glazed donuts, two chocolate milks, and some donut holes. Yeah, the sweets with this one. I don't want people knowing that I'm... <laughs> the sweets, dude, will put you over the edge quicker than any other thing. You could gain like 200 pounds in one year just eating nothing but donuts and sweet garbage like that, dude. I am very convinced. Eating donuts every morning. So I always come through here and throw away my trash on my way to work. She hides the evidence on the way to work, although it is pretty obvious what her eating habits are just by looking at her. What job does she have? What job could you do at this size? Don't lose this weight. I'll die. Even if you're doing office work, you're way slower than everybody else at the office because you have to get up from your desk and go to the printer or go fax things or go do this, that, and the other thing. Source, I've worked in many offices. I've worked with very morbidly obese people in the office and they did far less work than I did. I feel like I have a funeral planned more than- So you're laying in bed now and eating a bunch of candy. Hold on, what's she saying about a funeral? I feel like I have a funeral planned more than I have a wedding planned. I feel like I have a funeral planned more than I have a wedding planned. I'm at that point. Well, I wouldn't be too concerned about getting married or whatever when you're, like, fighting just to stay alive. Romance would be at the bottom of my priorities list, although everybody's lonely and everybody wants somebody. It's kind of weird, though, to go out looking for romance when you're not even close to the best version of yourself. What kind of partner are you going to attract? I don't know. 
Maybe you meet somebody who's also working on themselves in a similar way and you guys can bond through that experience. Where I have nowhere else to go. Oh, look at that puppy. Look at that puppy up there. That point where I have nowhere else to go. She hides a bunch of snacks around her house and dives in late at night. Around her house? Oh my goodness. And cries about potentially never getting married? Why are you laying in bed eating candy? What's with all of the sweets? You must have like type 10 diabetes. Goodness gracious. The irony of the feeling good snacks bag in front of her is astounding. I'm willing to bet she's never felt good about a single one of those snacks in the bin. I know. All right, now we're on to the next story. I'm doing this to them because I won't stop eating. I told all of them, I'm sorry that I let myself get into the situation, but I don't even know how to stop eating. Oh my goodness. <sighs> oh. <sighs> mm. Mm. Ah, dude, come on. I'm getting those good camera angles again. Okay, so we've got a little bit of extra um, you um, growing there. Um, they say it takes a lot of balls to be that fat. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, I didn't say that. That's, I didn't say that at all. Ah, oh, man, this is nuts. <laughs> You might remember Mom of the Year, Mila. She's the one who adopted the 10 foster kids and then made them all work like servants around her house. What? Adopted 10 foster kids and then made them work like servants? For breakfast, they fetch her an entire- What? Dude, foster care system. Can we please start looking into people, please? This happens all the time, you know. Or people just adopt a ton of kids so they can get the money from all these different kids and then they don't have to work and then they have the kids in squalid conditions where they feed them as cheaply as possible so they can have the profit. Adopt 10 kids. Don't take good care of any of them. Feed them as cheaply as possible. Profit. Actually, it happens more often than you would think. You often see like a morbidly obese person with all these foster kids. In fact, I often see people that seem like they have a lot of problems adopting a bunch of foster kids. We should probably do something about that in society. Normal people, please start adopting kids. Your bag of McDonald's. What is it with these 600 pound lifers? They really can't resist McDonald's in any capacity. Ba da 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 da, it's killing me. <laughs> Don't sue me. Don't sue me, McDonald's. That was satire. I actually fully endorse everyone to eat whatever products are featured here. But especially for breakfast. She eats three breakfast biscuit sandwiches, hash brown- Breakfast biscuits? Those suck, dude. At least get a McMuffin. Dude, I swear to God. One time back in the day, I worked at Wells Fargo Home Mortgage. I went in on a weekend, you know, to help out the team and get some work done. They wanted to show their appreciation for us working on the weekend, so they brought us some McDonald's. I reach into the bag and pull out, to my dismay, a sausage and egg biscuit. Biscuit. I'm like, the f***? Like, you want my mouth to get all dry? It's like the Sahara in this b***. Get me a muffin, bro. I'm sorry, sorry, I went a little crazy right there, but dude, a sausage and egg biscuit? He's lucky I didn't take a swing at him. It was so dry. It was so dry, my mouth instantly needed eight ounces of water, dude. Sounds orange juice, and God no- At least you got orange juice. Those what else is in that bowl I can't see. She lays in bed as her kids get ready for school without any help, which will make them super independent, but why would you adopt just to not be a mother? She adopted them for the money, and they're literally just taking care of her. She adopted slaves. Get a 12 pack of the peach soda. Two 12 packs will be fine. Ice cream bars, please. I don't use. Oh my goodness gracious. How is this legal? So when I lock up a bunch of children in my basement and make them do manual labor, it's against the law, but this is fine. I can't have a sweatshop in my basement, but this is chill. I was gonna give them plenty of breaks, dude. What's the problem? I have a coal mine in my basement that I started digging, okay? It's gonna be fine. Everybody just calm down. Those kids could barely breathe when they got here, okay? Don't worry about the black lung. Little Timmy's gonna be fine. My friends go shop unless they're with their parents. They don't do it by themselves. Yeah, typically you go with your parents to the store or they go to the store and you don't even go at all. It's pretty bizarre to see a bunch of kids going shopping for their mother. Go to candy and chocolate clusters. I feel like these. She rattles off and absolutely she likes these. Let's stop giving her stuff she likes. Killer grocery list for her kids to grab from the store. Butter, margarine, same thing. Soda. Butter and margarine are not the same thing. Margarine is terrible for you. Uh, ice cream, whipped cream. How is this legal? I swear to God, how is this legal? 
macaroni and cheese and much more. It's just hard to know what to do when she wants food because we feel bad for her because she's on the bed. You feel bad for her because she's on the bed. Well, you know this isn't normal. You shouldn't be having to take care of her. She should be taking care of you. She adopted you. You didn't adopt her, right? They should be sending you those checks, not her. When I want them to bring me something I crave, I know that that's... See, we're up to the chest plate right there. What a tangled web we weave when we eat off a chest plate. That doesn't rhyme. What's keeping me in this bed and from being their mom? Once I start into a bag of junk food, there is no stopping. <sighs> the kids discuss how they'll get in trouble if they don't bring her enough junk food and snacks. The youngest daughter even says that she feels like her mom's weight is her responsibility. Dude. That is heartbreaking. I'm going to be... Dude, stop falling for this lady's mental tricks. Be real with you. These kids are going to have trauma forever because of this. And it's all the mom's fault. What do you eat? I agree, plot twist. This is nonsense. Two days. Uh -huh. But I just can't stop eating. I just can't stop eating. To hell with these kids, right? I just can't stop eating. Hey, kids. When I'm eating what I crave. It is such an incredible feeling. When I'm eating what I crave, it's such an incredible feeling. No, it's not. No, it is not. I've had all of the foods that you're eating. They're pretty good, I guess. After the grocery store, like I've said, they're not like, fuck all of my dreams good. Trip, they all lay in bed and eat chocolate together. <laughs> As soon as her youngest son brings a little piece of chocolate into the bed, she's demanding to know where the rest of it is. What? It's devastating that this is the only way that they can bond. Especially since Mila can't even get out of bed. Right, let's go. Mm. Oh, goodness. Okay, done. Oh well, my goodness. I guess they are bonding by bringing out her bedpan and helping her pee. So, there's that. I remember when we used to bond over rolling my morbidly obese mother onto her bedpan. Childhood memories. Everything has to be brought to me. Can't blame the kids for obeying Mello. <gasps> the, ma the macaroni and cheese. Go. What the hell is that? A bunch of meatballs? For the noodles. For dinner, she cooks fried chicken, collard greens, mac oh. and cheese, and biscuits all from the table next to her bed. Mac and cheese and biscuits, too many carbs. Somebody call an exterminator ASAP. There is no way that that house isn't crawling with bugs. Dude. Cooking in bed again, stop it. Dude, of course there are bugs all over that house. I saw somebody earlier, they got a little bit of food right here on their chest. They just went like this. I just brushed it off to wherever on the floor, I guess. Due to all the food that's getting eaten and prepared in the bedrooms. We open at 10.30. Oh, okay. Uh, can I place an order for pickup? Yes, ma'am. all. Yes, ma'am. We took this pizza for me. <laughs> Pick up this pizza for her. He's like, yeah, sure, I'll get that right away. And then he just goes and takes a nap. Why? Because my yard no know, Ma. Why do you do that? Oh, okay. Okay, he's not doing it. He's like, no, Mom, I can't do that. Go and pick up my pizza right now. Uh-oh. I think I'll let you know. No, right now. Before the- Oh, is he standing firm, dude? Yes, do it. Do it. Do it for her, bro. Be like, no, I'm afraid I can't do that. And she starts yelling at you. <laughs> what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Get up out of that bed and come do something about it. Right. You can't do anything. Are you going to get so mad that you get up out of that bed and come do something about it? Pizza places even open in the morning. She orders one. That's crazy to be calling pizza places at like 10 in the morning. They haven't even opened yet. Like, ma'am, we don't open until noon. What are you doing? Her son tries really hard not to pick it up for her, but he has no choice. It's sad to see him try and fight back. He'll probably get... Gr Did he cave eventually? Grounded or something if he didn't listen. That being said, what's she gonna do? Get up and chase him? Is she exactly. Yeah, we passed away. She wants me to... Uh, Aw, dude. Take her to kids. I think she's trying to throw herself with food. This... Bro, you got these kids crying and stuff. Lady, get it together. This is not the memory that I want for my children to have. Well, I mean, isn't this why you adopted that? I'm not trying to be mean, but... Right? Why do you adopt five children if you're like 700 pounds and you cannot take care of one child? Why did they let her adopt five children when she cannot take care of herself? I propose that if you cannot wipe your own butt, that you cannot adopt children. Can we have that be a rule? When you go to adopt the kids, alright, let me see if you can reach your own backside. You cannot. Okay, clearly you cannot raise children. That I ate myself into a grave. She sits in bed and eats an entire pizza to the face with a soda as her kids cry about- The kid had some pizza too. 
the potential of her dying. How on earth could you do this to a bunch of innocent kids? And that's about all we have time for today. My favorite one, I guess, or at least the most outrageous one, was that last one where that lady adopted five children and they were waiting on her hand and foot. Oh my goodness. Maybe we could not allow that in the future adoption system. The foster system in this country really drops the ball a lot. They put kids in with some very questionable people on the regular. Maybe we should look into people for like 5 or 10 minutes before allowing them to adopt kids. That's all I'm saying. It might be a good idea. What was the most outrageous thing that you saw in today's episode? Let me know in a comment below. Please click the like button. One like equals one mustache coming. Anyway, that about does it. Thanks for watching, commenting, liking, and subscribing. And I'll see you in the next one.